Hello friends, in today's case presentation, I will be showing you a non-union neck femur case and we'll be seeing whether the basic principles application can bring union in this kind of fracture. So this was a case of femur neck fracture which was presented to emergency and the surgeon had planned for close reduction and internal fixation with dynamic hip screw along with the derotation screw. But the surgeon was surprised to see the intraoperative views on fracture table. You see there is frank sclerosis in this area and in this area and a major part of the neck seems to be resolved. That means the history was a dubious one and actually it was not a fresh injury. We routinely perform computed tomography scans for neck femur fractures. So, so when the surgeon checked the CT images he was surprised. You see this was a CT image which he had missed examining preoperatively. This part is almost sclerotic as well as this part and the majority of the neck is resolved and you see some cognition is also there a fragment is lying here in between the non-union side so kind of pseudo arthrosis so if we go to the basic principles what we need for union in neck fever fracture in most of the cases it is biomechanical failure that means there is some sort of malreduction and the biomechanical position which is given after fixation might not be an appropriate one because neck femur does not tolerate varus at all. So you see these lines are representing the trabeculae, the compressive trabeculae of the femoral head and their extension into the calcar is this one. The angle right here is almost 90 degree. So we have to align these trabeculae to almost 180 degree so that the forces which are passing through these compressive trabeculae are in line with the weight bearing axis. If we fix the fracture like this then definitely it is going to fail because the trabecular alignment is not good. It is an extreme virus. So the surgeon gave more traction and after giving traction he was able to realign the trabeculae to some extent but still you see this is the alignment of the trabeculae here and this is the alignment of the trabeculae here. So it needs more valgization. That means angle between these trabeculae and these trabeculae should be close to 180 degree. Then only the forces are going to be passing exactly parallel to the trabecular alignment. So this kind of picture we want for the trabecular alignment in a biomechanically stable position. So this was the initial picture and the surgeon gave more traction. Now you see the inferior part of the fracture line here in the distal fragment and the inferior part of the fracture line here in the proximal fragment are to some extent at same level. But still you see this mismatch, this part is empty. The neck is not able to realign with whole of the femoral head. Why? Because most part of the neck has already been resolved. It is not going to match the anatomy of the proximal fragment because it is a non-union. Now the length is not an issue but still some virus is still there. You see the trabeculae in proximal fragment are like this and in the distal fragment are like this. So the angle is still not close to 180 degree. Something more needs to be done to make it close to 180 degree. So the commonest tricks, the K wires. So a thick K wire can be inserted into the proximal fragment and then this end can be tilted downwards to valgize it. By doing that, we can align this fragment with this fragment. The distal fragment can definitely be aligned more by giving more valgus, while the proximal fragment can be joystuck to this fragment. So this kind of picture is what we are aiming for. While the distal fragment was valgized by keeping the limb in more abduction. And the moment he was able to replicate this picture, he transfixed the distal fragment with the proximal fragment through a thicker K wire. And in lateral view also, he confirmed whether the reduction is satisfactory or not. Again, since it is a non-union, we need not to go for anatomical reduction. We just want the alignment to be good. That means the neck axis here should match the femoral head axis in lateral view. And in AP view, we are definitely going towards the valgus. Now coming to fixation. Since it is a non-union, biology is definitely compromised. So if we want it to heal, if we want it to heal with absolute stability, that means there should be contact at the fracture side, there should be a rigid fixation. Now in femoral head, the strongest part is the inferior quadrant. So whatever strong fixation we want, we want to place that in inferior quadrant. So the DHS leg screw was inserted in the lower quadrant and the superior part was reserved for the derotation screw. Now here you see there is a small gap that means 
we are still not able to achieve compression at the fracture site which is a prerequisite where we want it to heal by absolute stability so in my previous video on dhs i've told you keep this leg screw slightly short of the lateral cortex because by doing that you will be able to gain some extra compression by pulling this screw outwards into the barrel and when you are doing that you have to pull this k wire slightly out so that this tip is not crossing the fracture side because otherwise this may interfere in your compression so this was done you see there is some distraction here this part will remain distracted because we have gone for velgization this is going to remain open and the moment you tight this compression screw you see the gap is still there and we are tightening the compression screw and when we tighten the compression screw this leg screw is getting pulled outwards in an attempt in doing so there is compression in this zone earlier the zone was open now it has got compressed that means at least in some plane we are getting contact between these sclerotic ends then we tightened it to a maximum possible force so that this fixation remains stable rigid and there is compression at the fracture site we are now sure that the trabecular you see the trabecular lining here is almost parallel to the trabecular lining here like this now to add more stability we can definitely add one screw in this area so a derotation screw was inserted parallel to the dynamic hip screw in the superior quadrant which was relatively unoccupied see, now we have fixed the fracture with dynamic hip screw this part has opened up and we see some bone is there which is probably some remnant of femoral neck is still there and majority of the part is resolved but we have contact in this zone in lateral view also we have contact on the anterior cortex while the posterior part is not clearly visible probably because of the combination which was pre-existing now this was the first follow up radiograph at six weeks you see there is no loss of reduction the contact between the margins in the proximal part is still maintained as we had done intraoperatively and in lateral view also there is no evidence of loss of reduction and we are not seeing any collapse also because since the margins are already sclerotic it is not like the cancellous bone which is going to collapse so the sclerotic margins are unlikely to collapse now if you see the previous postoperative radiograph you see there is some abduction contracture on this side this is probably because of the shortening of this long standing non-union the patient might have been walking on this shortened limb therefore her abductors were shortened and when we fix the fracture to a valgus alignment there was tilting of the pelvis towards the affected side but we anticipated that with time it should resolve since the length has been restored now to some extent this is third follow-up radiograph after three months of surgery you see the tilt of the pelvis is improving and good thing is that you see there is no loss of reduction there is no collapse and the fracture site which was visible here in previous radiograph has started disappearing and in this zone in which we had a remnant of femoral neck this empty part is also getting filled with new bone compare again this remnant here and this remnant here is progressing towards the calcar and in lateral view there is no loss of reduction the alignment is good as it was in the post-operative radiograph and this is the third follow-up radiograph that is after four and a half months in which you see a bridging bone is already forming inside the void and we can see there is continuous bone formation along the calcar which was not there in the initial radiograph so this part was earlier empty while here you see there is good bridging bone formation here and in this part also there is evidence of closing of the fracture site and this view is a good one in which shows there is continuous bone formation in the calcar region and the anterior margin of the femoral neck till now we had not allowed the patient to bear weight because we didn't want any extra force on this fixation that could result in loss of reduction therefore we ordered a ct before starting full weight bearing so in 3d ct you can see there is good bone formation along the calcar the bone can be seen continuous in this area and in the ct cut the coronal cut also you see there is bridging bone formation here and in this axial cut you see the anterior bone is also bridging over here and in this sagittal cut you see the calcar is continuous that means that means the bone has completely bridged the calcar area therefore we allowed the patient to bear weight and now she is asymptomatic at all and she has been doing all her routine activities 
and she had sent us this video also in which you can see she's walking freely without any limitation or walking aid no one can detect that she had a non-union fracture that was diagnosed intraoperatively so always take care whenever you are taking neck femur fracture patients in ot because often the x-rays may not confirm whether it is a non-union or not and sometimes the patient does not give you clear history. They just want to get treated. Therefore, they fake the history that the fracture is a fresh one. So a CT is a must in such cases because that can help you in planning your surgery. So in this case, we brought union into a non-union by using the low strain environment, which, which was provided by the dynamic hip screw, which was fixed after achieving good compression at the fracture site indirectly by pulling the leg screw outwards. And then additional stability was provided by a cannulated cancer screw and we had provided a biomechanically stable trabecular alignment by adding more valgus to the construct. The trabecular angle was almost close to the 180 degree cutoff and the fixation was definitely a rigid one because there are several studies which prove that fixation of these fractures with dynamic hip screw is definitely a rigid fixation and adding extra screw definitely adds to the stability. So these factors probably helped in getting union in this case. So I hope this case presentation will provide you more insights in neck femur fractures non-union using these principles. So valgus osteotomy is definitely the treatment but when you don't have any backup and you are not prepared to perform valgus osteotomy you can definitely use the basic principles. Thank you.